inflation is running too hot for people to notice, but all they know is that it's time to party. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. That's right, we got a party like it's 1999. And there are multiple meanings to that, of course. I'm not just talking about the Prince song. The first thing we need to talk about is the Fed, the Federal Reserve, and what they have said. It's unbelievable. I'm going to show you this. It's crazy. Number two, we're going to look at New Zealand. My friends, I know I have many subscribers in New Zealand. I've got some information for you. Number three, digital currencies. This has been coming up, a serious topic. I see them in the comments. I see it all over the news. We'll talk about that and more. Let's go. So you saw this information coming out. Inflation surges as consumer prices leap 5.4%, the biggest jump since 2008. I covered it in the previous video. This has been the talk of the town. And then, of course, you could see what's happening along with that, the spending. Federal tax revenues set a record through June. You look at the deficits going crazy and the debt expanding like we've never seen before. So all of these things right now are just surging. They are going into levels we have never seen, okay? Everything's breaking records at this time. In, in conjunction with that, you see this. 1.8 million Americans have turned down jobs due to the unemployment benefits. Actually, when you look at it, I think this is way too small of a sample size to make that claim. I'll say that, but that's what you know this says. And specifically, I'll tell you right now, it's 463 adults in the survey. Too small, if you ask me. But anyway, I receive enough money from unemployment insurance uh, without having to work. So, you know, 13% have said that. So they're estimated that would be about 1.8 million Americans. The point here is that there's a lot of spending. I just look at the economic aspect of this, okay? There's a lot of spending in the stimulus measures right now and they can't pull it back without creating a problem. Okay, that's all I'm trying to say. On the complete other end of the spectrum, you have a company like BlackRock, I posted this on my, on my Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and so on, that is doing better than ever. BlackRock closes in on the once unthinkable $10 trillion in assets. There's a second thing that I want to talk about, and that is the chief executive, Larry Fink, saying that inflation is here to stay. So what he said is completely different than what, number one, the Fed said. Number two, what all of the Bank of America fund manager surveys are saying. So hundreds of billions of dollars in that basically going towards the mentality that, no, 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 inflation is temporary. $10 trillion in assets, you could see how much money this one company has. BlackRock works like this with the Fed and the Treasury together to do this, you know, I don't know, I don't have a word for it, but essentially they have admitted, they have absolutely admitted that they look at what the Federal Reserve does and they simply buy that with all the ETFs, the fallen angels, everything to do with that. I've covered it here so many times before previously. We know all this is happening. At the same time, BlackRock, through the use of all these special purpose vehicles, is acting like a middleman because the Federal Reserve can't directly buy all of these things. So they use BlackRock to do it. I mean, talk about... <laughs> nothing Nothing is coming out. Nothing is coming out. <laughs> it's... It's crazy. What do you call this? What do you call it? They say that the merger between the corporations and the state is fascism. If that's, if that's the word, okay, I don't know. It's something else as far as I'm concerned. Corporatism? I don't know. Whatever. Revealed the true extent of America's food monopolies and who pays the price. So I wanted to connect this in specifically. There's a method to my madness, believe it or not. In this Guardian article, which I would recommend you take a look at, it's pretty cool because they break it down to all these different types of food. And let me just give you an example. Mayonnaise. 83% of the market share is owned by three firms. Go down. Beer. 79% of the market share is owned by four firms. And you just go and you, and you can look through. Sour cream, 64%. Pizza, frozen pizza, 66%. And you just go through it, okay? 
and you could see how much of you know all these different conglomerates really own of the food that you and everybody else eats okay i understand that obviously people are some people are the exception but i'm just saying the majority of people the general public and it's crazy it's not just the media where you have i believe it's five companies now that own and control everything everything is controlled by a handful of companies investigation shows scale of big food corporations market dominance and political power remember that second part there political power almost 80 percent of uh, dozens of grocery items bought by regularly regularly by ordinary americans these are controlled by these companies um i had another stat in here somewhere overall only 15 percent 15 cents excuse me of every dollar that we spend in the supermarket goes to the farmers the rest goes to processing and marketing more importantly marketing our food so you got to understand where the money goes to and from you're not going to hear this in the alternative news making all these connections look at this the mind of a madman transitory inflation or not you've got this disparity in some pieces of the puzzle where you've got crude oil rising higher but lumber coming down further many different things have escalated to levels we've never seen before others like lumber big time example here lumber is at 608 it was at 1700 at one point so you could see there's a big big change and who's behind all of this well of course it's the federal reserve but what i'm about to show you here is going to blow your mind it's going to blow your mind okay so you had powell here feds powell keeps the script on jobs recoveries feels heat on the inflation front if you look at the actual testimony this is here it's a prepared statement directly on the federalreserve.gov website don't go anywhere else don't go to the reuters articles don't go to the cnbc articles to get your information when you want the federal reserve data it is all on the fed's website whether we're going to the st louis fed website which is the fred website whether we're going to the federalreserve.gov website or the new york fed website or any of the others we want it directly from the source because they always pull out these snippets but i want the whole deal and look at this here okay there's there's a lot in here by the way in the, in the prepared statements uh, but i'm going to give you obviously what you need to know right now this is powell saying this inflation has increased notably and will likely remain elevated in the coming months before moderating so right now he's as far as i'm concerned based on the way that that's written it's going to extend beyond remember i was talking about september 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 i think they're now going to push it out even further when they have their September meeting, they're going to say, we think that this is going to go on a little bit longer, but it's still temporary. We think it's going to go on a little longer, but it's still temporary. Every chance they get, every chance they get, go, 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 go. Okay. Further, I had it in here somewhere. Okay. To avoid sustained periods of unusually low or high inflation the fomc monetary policy framework seeks their longer term inflation expectations that are well anchored at two percent so don't worry about it now but over the long term we want two percent you've heard that before right and then here sustainably achieving maximum employment and price stability depends on a stable financial system and we continue to monitor the vulnerabilities here while asset valuations have generally risen with improving fundamentals as well as increased investor risk appetite highlighting stocks have gone up and people are willing to take riskier bets household balance sheets are on average quite strong business leverage has been declining from high levels and the institutions at the core of the financial system remain resilient so essentially yes we see the bubble forming but there are no risks to be had so now monetary policy what are they going to do about it 
according to this, financial system strong, there's growth. You read this document, we have growth, we have everything being fantastic. I now turn to monetary policy, talking about the pace of the assets and so on. These measures, along with our strong guidance on interest rates in our balance sheet, will ensure that monetary policy will continue to deliver powerful support to the economy until the recovery is complete. What does that mean? Don't think that we're going to stop money printing anytime soon. This ain't over yet. All right, that's it for that statement. Now, I'm going to take you further down the line. You got to know this stuff. This is the beige book. And the beige book is essentially getting all the different Fed banks putting together what they see happening into one document. Okay, I provide that to you regularly, brought it up probably 100 times here on the channel over the years. Now, most recent information, uh, you could read it right here. I usually just read the summary just to get an idea of what's happening, but you can go into further details if you're interested. As it relates to, by the way, the whole thing is saying we've got growth, everything is fantastic, employment situation's great, uh, you know, markets are fantastic, like everything is great, except we've got some shortages and so on, and that is pushing prices up higher, okay? Look at what they said, though. While some contacts felt that pricing pressures were transitory, the majority expected further increases in input costs and selling prices in the coming months. So you have the Federal Reserve saying one thing, and you have the Federal Reserve saying another thing, and then you even have people within the FOMC who are not really on the same page. But ultimately, overall, we know something is very clear. More money printing is yet to come. Number one, as inflation rises, people rush out to buy things. Doesn't matter what it is, they're trying to convert their fiat into something real. Number two, dollar devaluation creates speculation and malinvestment. This is an absolute fact documented over time. Number three, as an investor, you gotta watch out. Do not chase the trend. That's my message to you. You'll be much better off in that way. You can invest. You can be prudent. But you don't want to be chasing the trend because usually that last little bit, you want to get the meat of the trade. You don't want to try to pinpoint the top or the bottom. I know I'm running on real long here. I wanted to cover this. My friends in New Zealand, take a look. Reserve Bank to look at cashless digital currency. This was brought to me by a subscriber. I'm showing it here. All I'm going to note is that every country is doing this. In fact, I'll just forward really quickly. Europe takes another step towards introducing a digital euro. They're not the only ones. You're seeing this all around the world. They're at least, at this point, they're at least talking about it. Then we have this huge news, my friends in, in New Zealand. Look at this. Reserve Bank likely to increase the official cash rate. Think of this as like the Fed funds rate, okay? As slowly as it can due to high levels of debt. So this is what they want to do. They want to start to increase. But what else did they know? I, I can't believe that that's the, you know, the top story. Look down a little bit further, and I think it's important it announced that it will reduce the level of its current policy settings, okay? From July 23rd, it will stop buying bonds under the large-scale asset purchase program introduced last year. No more QE for New Zealand and the potential in the near future for increasing interest rates. They would be... I don't know at this point anymore, but it's over 20 rate increases this year in 2021 so far from central banks around the world. So that is the direction because some governments around the world are actually cautious a little bit, like minimal, but the Federal Reserve is saying, nope, we're not doing that. It's really interesting to see the difference right now. I mean, typically, it isn't like that. And this right here is another article talking about um, New Zealand and, and what, you know, the real estate uh, bubble and so on. The fear of missing out, the speculative behavior, 
fads, fashion, and cycles. All of those things drive human behavior. That sits a bit behind what we've seen over the last 12 months, without a doubt. Just as they spiked above these fundamental drivers, they could also fall. We can only talk about what we see over the medium term at sustainable level, and we are seeing there's no reason for growth to continue as it has. And essentially what they're trying to say here is that the hope, the hope here, is that they increase interest rates a little bit and they can kind of keep this level. Let's say it's a million dollars for a home, keep it at a million dollars. Don't let it crash and just let it go sideways so that people can actually keep up with it. That's the hope. Not exactly sure if that's ever going to be able to happen. Huge news. Maybe I'll, I'll do another uh, video about it. The China credit impulse has crashed even further. This is a major deflationary indicator that is very well known to be extremely accurate. So I'm going to tell everybody once again, watch the China credit impulse. I've done previous videos. I've shown you how it's broken down in previous videos. And that's it. I, I ran out of time. Um, in fact, I didn't get to literally half of the articles that I wanted to get into. Regardless, if you are not already, you've got to join what is got to be one of the longest running YouTube channels in this particular space. And unfortunately, we don't know what's going on here at any given moment. There's a purge. We know that. So what I ask of you is that you join the insiders. It's for free. There's nothing you know, you got to pay or anything is completely free. This is my way to get to you directly long term. My goal is to create a newsletter. But for the time being, at least I'll email you the video of the day so that way you know that you get it so that if it doesn't end up in your feed, at least it ends up in your inbox. That's the whole point. But really, I want to create a newsletter. I want to give people some real deal information directly to their email. I don't have the resources for that right now, but Perhaps at one point in the future, I'll be able to do that. But at least for now, you get the video of the day, moneygps.com. If you found the video informative, hit that thumbs up button. Also, check me out on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, Pinterest, whatever, any, any social media. Go on there. I'm creating content every single day. And in fact, you'll get the news faster on there than you will in the YouTube video because by the time that actually gets posted, it might be 12 hours later, 16 hours later from the news that I'm able to get out on these platforms faster. So check me out on there at The Money GPS. And if you haven't seen this video already, you definitely want to check it out. Click it and I'll see you there.